The Roborock S7 Max V Ultra Robotic Vacuum Cleaner is the top of the line vacuum cleaner from Roborock's lineup. It's a look at the future of where robotic vacuum cleaners are going, and you'll certainly pay a hefty price for experiencing that future. But now it's been six months since Roborock sent me one, and has it been worth it? And who do I think this robotic vacuum cleaner is for? Let me start by answering that last question. The Roborock S7 Max V is for those who want a mop and vacuum in one single robot. This is especially a good device if you have a lot of hard floors in your home. It's also a good robotic vacuum to get if you want one that can empty itself and clean the mop attachment itself by utilizing the empty wash fill dock. Also, the vacuum has a good amount of suction power and has pretty good obstacle performance, so if you don't always have immaculate floors, you want a robot that is isn't going to get stuck running something over. That's who I think this robotic vacuum is for. Now, has the obstacle avoidance been perfect over the past six months? No, there have been one or two instances. One time it ran over some string and then stopped working. Another time there was a blanket draped over my couch and the blanket was just slightly hitting the floor. The robot failed to see that, started sucking up the blanket and then just stopped. So, but that's only been like, one or two instances for the entire six month period of testing this robot out. Most of the time, the robot will correctly identify objects, which you can see from the smart map in the app and avoid those objects like surge protectors, shoes, and power cords. Also for the past six months, I've noticed that the S7 Max V does an incredible job at cleaning carpet in my apartment. The robot has a carpet boost feature you can enable where the robot will automatically detect it's over carpet and it'll turn its suction to the max. It'll also use floor detection features to know when it's over a hard floor and then lower its mop for mopping. Another thing I like about this is you don't have to keep your lights on for it to clean efficiently. The robot has a built-in light that'll automatically turn on in dark environments so its cameras can still see and identify objects and it uses LiDAR for detecting walls and doors in the dark. Also, I found that the LiDAR sensor with the S7 Max V helps it avoid a lot more obstacles than my older Roomba robotic vacuum cleaner, which we also did a six months later review of. And you can see that review by clicking on the link here to the right. I'll also leave a link to that review in the description below. And if you like the fact that we do reviews after a six month period, make sure you hit that subscribe button to see more of our six months later reviews. And if you want to even further the mission of our channel and receive a couple of extra perks as well, hit that join button to learn more about our six club membership program. The other thing that makes the vacuum very convenient and easy to use is its empty wash fill dock. The base station allows the robot to empty its dustbin, fill the robot with clean water, and wash the mop and empty dirty mop water into the dirty water container at the top of the unit. Now, even though the base station plus the robot gives you pretty much a completely automated cleaning experience, that doesn't mean you're not going to have to do some maintenance on this system. You'll need to clean its filter and dustbin periodically, and I do like that Roborock made the filter washable at least, plus the brush and the base station also has a filter, and areas where debris can be left that you'll want to clean periodically too. Another thing I like about this robot is its battery life. It's easily able to clean my entire apartment on a single charge, which is something my older Roomba struggled to do by the time it hit its second year of life. The dock also supports fast charging as well as off-peak charging. We'll see how the Roborock does over the next year or two with its battery life, but so far it seems promising. Next, let's talk about some other design features of the Roborock robot and its base station that I've really come to enjoy over the past six months. First, I'm actually a big fan of the LED status indicator light on the front of it. It makes it look like the robot is thinking and reacting to things in real time, and it just appears smarter than it probably is. But it just gives it this nice futuristic flair. Now, one thing I was a bit concerned about when I first got it is the LED status light remains on when at the dock. And I didn't want it to be so bright at night when I was trying to go to sleep, but thankfully, Roborock was thoughtful enough to put in a do not disturb feature that dims the lights at night to the point where they no longer are bothersome to me. 
Another feature that's really cool is called remote viewing. This lets you check in on your home while you're away with the robot's front facing camera. And not only that, you can talk with them as well with the onboard mic by using the Roborock app from wherever you are. As the robot cleans around my apartment, the smart map you see in the app has all of the bells and whistles you'd come to expect from a modern robotic vacuum cleaner. Keep out zones you can place on the map that the robot won't go in. It'll automatically map your home the first time you use the robot and you can rename rooms, save multiple floors, add virtual furniture to the map where your actual furniture is, and you can even edit what type of flooring each room has in the case the robot has mistakenly marked it as the wrong type. Which hasn't actually happened to me though, it's been very accurate with its floor type detection. On the mini map, you'll see all kinds of objects it identifies like wires, power strips, shoes, it'll even detect my feet as footwear if I'm standing in front of the vacuum. In the Roborock app, another nice feature is a maintenance schedule and estimate of when parts of the robot will need to be replaced based on how much you're currently using the robot. That is one downside to all robotic vacuum cleaners, you will still need to do occasional maintenance on them. And while the app does tell you how frequently you should be cleaning different parts of the robot, I do wish it would send proactive reminders of that. I found with all of my robotic vacuum cleaners so far that it can be kind of easy to ignore the maintenance that you actually should be doing on them. So those are all of the things I've really liked about the Roborock S7 Max V Ultra system over the past six months. Now let's get into some things I haven't liked about this system. And first up is smart home integrations. There is no full support for Apple's HomeKit with this system or for the Google Home platform. There is only support right now for Amazon's assistant and ideally you would have support for all three main platform ecosystems. Another thing I don't quite like about this robot is with the mopping function. If you have a lot of carpet, I found the robot doesn't lift the mop high enough over my carpet, so it'll make the carpet slightly damp when it goes over it, which can be slightly annoying. I think Roomba's new combo J7 Plus robotic vacuum cleaner and mop has a much better retractable design where the mop is retracted on top of the robot, and with that design, no carpet is going to get wet. Next, if you accidentally close a door to the room where the base station is, the robot can get really screwed up. It's not smart enough to figure out that a door was closed and it just needs to sit outside the door and wait until somebody opens it and send you an error message saying it couldn't get back to its base station. What it'll do is it'll continue to try to just edge along the wall of that room to try to get into it and it'll typically just totally screw up your smart map. It'll create hallways and rooms that just don't exist. Now, thankfully, Roborock's app will save backups of your map so you can easily restore the map to a previous correct backup. Also, and this is a bit nitpicky, but given how much you spend on this robot, I think the view with the different room colors could be designed to be a little bit nicer on the eyes. Right now, it just looks kind of ugly and simple. Another thing that I think could have been improved is for setup in the quick start guide that comes with the Roborock's base station, there should have been a QR code to download the Roborock app. So those are all of the downsides and things I think Roborock could improve. Now let's talk about who I think should pick up this robot and if I think it's worth the price. And let's start there with that last question. This robot and dock retail for $1,400 US dollars, which is a very expensive purchase. Now, given the engineering and invention it took to get a robot and base station that can do it all and have a dock that automatically washes the mop, what Roborock is charging for this experience isn't necessarily unreasonable. It's just expensive. The bigger question I think you need to ask yourself is how much do you need a robotic vacuum cleaner that does both vacuuming and will also mop for you? If you mostly have carpets like I do and just a few rooms with hard floors, I don't think the mopping functionality is really worth it enough to justify the expense when you can get a robotic vacuum cleaner from Roborock and others that comes with an auto empty dock, which I do think is a feature that is absolutely worth it no matter what brand of robotic vacuum you purchase. I think you would go with the S7 Max V Ultra if you want a top of the line combo robotic vacuum and mop with an innovative design and self-cleaning mop functionality. So those are all of my thoughts on the S7 Max V Ultra. If you're interested in purchasing this robot, I've left links here in this video and in the description below so you can check its latest price. 
hit that thumbs up button if you liked this video and found it helpful and subscribe to the channel to see more six months later reviews like this one. And if you want to further support our mission and what the channel does and receive some extra perks, click that join button to learn more about our six club membership program. And if you're looking for what to watch next, check out some of our other long-term reviews by clicking on the playlist to the right. For six months later, I'm Josh Tedder. Thanks for watching.